This video today is a very important video, represents a young man that has been using steroids for many, many years and is coming to me for help on how to come off steroids. So the title of this video technically is a 25 year old man with testosterone decadrobalin testicular failure because those are the basic meds he's on and he's been trying to come off for many years and um, he's having significant issues coming off steroids on his own and he's suffering. It all starts off as we do with a one hour consultation and we did some labs for him and he did a one hour consultation and he saw me, let's just say in the end of last year, in the end of October. I want to keep. So he does his labs and this is October, early October. He comes in two weeks later and the chief complaint is He's on steroids for seven years and he wants to come off. He's suffering. He doesn't want to be on steroids anymore. History of present illness is 25 year old man. He's on steroids since 18 on and off. So about seven years, he's started steroids when he was very young. And he's doing at that time period from 18 up until even now. Um, he likes testosterone and decadrobalin. Interestingly enough, tells me he likes to keep his steroid cycles simplified because he thought that doing that he would be able to bounce back and not have withdrawal syndrome and not need too much PCT and that when he was done he's, his testicles uh, would come back and work interestingly enough so at that time period past medical history significant for uh, ADHD uh, social history college educated let's just say he works in the finance world um, doesn't drink, doesn't smoke. His meds, he's on um, some ADD medicines, Adderall actually. He has no known drug allergies. And that's the simple history for him. Physical exam is otherwise normal. And the rest of the piece, we move to his labs. So remember, so my one hour consultations are with labs. So this is the history part. The labs were done two weeks before he saw me. Labs. HDL on the cholesterol panel, low at 28. LDL is also very low. This guy's great genetics, actually, and he's very lean. Uh, blood urea nitrogen, elevated at 29. Otherwise, renal function normal. Rest of things on the labs. Just want to be, be careful here. Normal estrogen level is 465 on a scale from 60 to 190 picograms per milliliter. He tells me that before, when he was off steroids, his total estrogen level was 800. So these are interesting uh, fluctuations. His hematocrit is slightly elevated at 50.6. Otherwise, uh, other aspects of the CMP and the CBC are normal. His FSH and LH, which are the pituitary gonadotropins, are, are less than 0.7 and less than 0.2, respectively. And um, these indicate that his, his brain, pituitary, his hypothalamus and his brain are completely shut off because... His testosterone level is 4,965 total nanograms per deciliter, and his free testosterone is 1732, uh, 1,732, and that's picograms per milliliter. So, essentially, he is on steroids at this time. He's on testosterone enanthate, 300 a week, and he's on 200 milligrams of decadroblin, and that's his picture. He says, Doc, this is what I'm on. He doesn't feel good. He does have some sexual issues. Even when he's on the steroids, he comes on and off. He wants to be off steroids. So I tell him, let me wean you. He doesn't feel comfortable with it. And he, I say, you should go see another doctor. You should see a urologist, your primary care doctor, endocrinology, and or even a psychiatric expert because he has biodysmorphia and he's been on for years and he, he is reaching out for help. So I offer that to him to wean him with the literature that we of course know. He thanks me very much and he leaves the office and he says he'll, he will return. He indeed does return, but he returns, um, he returns months later and he comes into the office three months later after the holidays and it turns out that a month after seeing me, he stopped his uh, steroids uh, cold turkey. He stopped everything cold turkey. So, and we have some labs to, to show what it looked like 
when he did this. So at this time period, as I said, he was on these different steroids, mainly testosterone and decadroblin, and he did conduct PCT uh, right after he saw me and he stopped his steroids. And essentially this PCT was Novadex two weeks after stopping the steroids. He did HCG um, and the Novadex was 20 milligrams BID. He did that for two weeks. He did HCG 500 every day right after he stopped the steroids and he did some Arimidex, but he didn't have much of it, he said, and he really didn't feel it was helping. So he decided to um, stop his PCT after three weeks and he felt that he didn't do it right and he didn't feel that it really has ever helped him, so he just decided to stop that. So he stops his steroids. I send him to labs. He's been off steroids now for a few months. He feels horrible. He, he said he felt flat, actually fully flat. He had no sexual libido whatsoever, didn't even have an inkling of, he said, what sex actually even is. It's a weird, hollow feeling, he said, and I've heard that before. So we sent him to labs, and what is his labs? And this is the point of this presentation, really, is what a labs look like from someone like this that's on steroids for a few months and he's on just test and DECA and not much, you know, 300, 400 of test and half the dose of decadroblin. His testosterone is 4,000. It's just interesting. You know, physicians just think it's incredible, these numbers. And, you know, some men take 10 times this dose. You know, we know that the labs are limited where the lab assay will actually become limited and say, like we had in these gonadotropin, the LH and FSH, it says greater than or less than because the machine can't even detect it, it's undetectable, or there's so much in the assay that it just can't read that much. So we see this all the time. So what were his labs after this period of this 25-year-old man coming off, again, years in this, and another try attempt of coming off steroids on his own with a very weak PCT regimen, not that there's any support for PCT. Total testosterone, 129 nanograms per deciliter. The scale is 250 to 1100. Free testosterone, 19.4 picograms per mil. Range on that is 46 to 224. Sex hormone binding globin for all the bro scientists out there, 24 scales 10 to 50. On this one, I did luteinizing hormone, focal stimulant hormone, exactly the same as when he was on. Less than LH, less than 0 0.2, and the FSH less than 0 0.7. So months later, coming off steroids, his brain is still completely shut down and his testosterone is shut down. So his hypothalamus and pituitary is completely sleeping and shut down, but he had, he has no testosterone. He went from having a testosterone level of almost 5,000 to a testosterone level here of 129. So at that time period, I said to him, sir, you're, you're, do, you're suffering. We can do something for you. You're not going to do steroids anymore. We agree. You can take from us and use doses of human chorionic gonadotropin, and we've learned not to use Clomid, but HCG, and we could use other agents like Tamoxifen and Novadex, but HCG is the main medicine for these men um, to make them feel better. Or in this case, we say, sir, you're suffering, your testosterone is, is after several months, is not coming back at all. Can we help you with, with weaning doses of esters of androgen testosterone? It's right out of the literature. Uh, you could find this literature in my book, and you could find this literature all over Google, anabolic steroid induced hypogonadism. So he decides to think on it. He wants to think. So he goes home and thinks. He's a patient of mine now for contracted. He's a patient for a year with me. Um, I did my history and physical exam. Everything is done. He understands the, the warnings, the risks, and the benefits of what we're doing. He's well-versed. Uh, he's a mature man. And he says, Doc, i got to think about it. I really don't want to go on anything. Just burned out. So he goes home and he contacts me a few weeks later and he says, Doc, I'm staying off. I just don't want to put anything in my body. I'm going to wait. That's why I'm doing this video. So February. Two months later, I said, Let, let's, what should we, what should we, he says, Doc, what should we do? Well, whenever you're ready, we can always help you and we could check your labs and see how you're coming back. 
And I have always offer him PCT, this legitimate medical PCT, always, it's ethical. And I always offer him estrus of androgen. It's always, it's for some, he's a 25 year old man. He's been on steroids for seven, eight years. He probably will never come back. So two months later, we run his, his panel again. What happens? His testosterone now is lower. Total is 100. Free is down to 12. Sex hormone body glob, and interestingly enough, piped up a little bit to 32. And forget the bro science and all this stuff. It just does it with a sex hormone body glob and resetting and knock. It just, it's a waste of time. It just, I can tell you it is. In the real clinical setting, it's a waste of time. These real numbers mean, have meaning. So this man now at this point is what? He is six months off steroids? Six months! His brain is getting his, his brain actually is getting worse at this point. He's going lower. There's no PCT. There's nothing. He's just living through this. Fortunately, he's just surviving. Some men can kill themselves with this kind of stuff. Thank God his ADD is pretty much ADD and not depression. So I see him again. Once again, I offer him the weaning protocols. I offer him help and love and support and care. I offer him the guidelines that we could talk about and see if it meets his help and we could help him with this. Straight evidence-based medicine. Uh, once again, he wants to think about it. He doesn't want it to start. He still wants to wait. Again, this is quite a rare case. Most men just basically sooner or later say, I, I can't wait. We do, and good physicians do say, please wait and see. If you come off steroids two weeks ago, your T is gonna bounce down low, depends what you're on. A month later, you're gonna bounce down low. Will it come back? It depends on your history. Is if you did one cycle, it's going to bounce right back, right? I mean, that's just common sense. Two cycles, three cycles, four cycles, seven, seven years, and he's a young man. So for all the endocrinology experts out there, be careful. For all the doctors out there, be careful. Just because the guy's young and looks healthy, his pituitary gland and his pituitary access to his gonads may be completely wasted and shut down. Anabolic steroid-induced hypogonadism. A lot of literature on it. We need to move into the field now, look, doing some imaging, look at the pituitary and, and the, the limbic regions to see what's happened. How does it die? How does it undergo apoptosis and permanent damage? It's permanent damage. What's the line? Cross this line, one cycle, two cycles, three cycles, four cycles. We know that the majority of men on steroids never come off. They're not, why, they, they tell me, why would I come off? They transition to me on, on androgen from anti-aging, from their own primary care, from endocrinology, urology, or just taking it themselves. These men are in trouble, so they need help. So, he, second time, it's been now four to six months, his T is low. I offer him, again, what does he want to do? Now we're coming up towards where we are today. So he decides to wait again, and I just did his lab work about a month ago. Testosterone's come up a little bit. Testosterone's come up after eight months. Testosterone's inching up. Total testosterone, 212. Free testosterone, 34.7. Sex hormone binding globin, back down again, guys. Back down again. It's low, up a little, low. Doesn't, no correlation at all. Uh, he's done nothing. He's still, at this point, I am yet to talk to him. You have to talk to this man. And remember the ranges. So range for total testosterone is about 250 to 1100. He's 212. What do we do with this case? What can we possibly do? This man's testosterone, so we're up on, we're at the eight month range. Um, do we think it's gonna, and no one knows, and no one really knows. Does it come back? in 60 days, maybe 90 days, is it one full year? He's coming up on a year this fall off steroids. Does it come up to 700 and does he feel great? I don't, probably not. What do we do for this man? Wow, this is the pinnacle case. This is, a, this is just the average case. This is an average case. If you're gonna do steroids and you're young, you better be very careful to realize that if you start steroids with or without PCT, you're never gonna come off, potentially. Please think about that. I really hope this case helps people, and thank you so much. Thomas O'Connor here. I'm glad you made it to the end of the video. If you liked it, hit the like button, and please subscribe to our channel. And I look forward to bringing you more cool and interesting videos just like this in the future. Stay strong and healthy.